Hey everyone, and welcome to a deep dive that's gonna, well, it's gonna change how you think about grammar. I mean it. We're tackling the present perfect tense. Ooh, exciting. Right, but I know, I know what you might be thinking. Tenses, that's kind of dry, isn't it? It can be, yeah. But here's the thing about this one, about the present perfect. It's not just some rule in a textbook. It's like, honestly, it's like a time machine, you know? It connects your past, what you've done, to who you are right now. I love that, the time machine analogy, because it really is often misunderstood, this tense. But once you get it, oh man, you see how much it shapes how we understand, like how actions from way back, they still have a story they're telling now. Okay, so let's unpack that a bit. What makes the present perfect different from like just talking about something that happened in the past? Like what's the secret sauce? All right, so it's all about the aspect of the verb we choose, not just the tense. Aspect, okay, hold on, gotta make sure we're all on the same page here. Sure, so think of tense as the when, past, present, future. Pretty straightforward. But aspect, that's like choosing the right filter for your Instagram, right? You're not changing what happened, but how people see it. Ooh, okay, I like that. So it's less about putting an event on a timeline and more about the, I don't know, the vibe of the time connection we're making. Exactly. Vibe is a good word for it. Like, imagine this. You're at a party. Someone asks about your hobbies. You wouldn't just say, I practice piano. Boring. You'd probably say, I've been playing piano for years, right? Shows how those past hours of practice, they still matter. That's the present perfect. Oh, I totally get it. It's about that direct link, that straight line from back then to now. Yeah. So how do we know when to use this time traveling tense? What are the clues? Give us the cheat codes. Uh -huh. All right, cheat codes. I like it. Okay. So there are these words and phrases, right? They're like signposts, instantly telling you present perfect time. We can think of them as, hmm. Trigger words. Ooh, trigger words. I love that. It's like they unlock the present perfect mystery. So which words are on the VIP list? Oh, you know, the usual suspects. We've got ever, never, for, since, oh, and just, yet, already. And then phrases like this week, this year, or so far, all that good stuff. Each one, it gives us a peek into how something from the past is still important to what's going on right this second. So each trigger word has its own way of connecting the past and present. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty. How about we start with ever and never? Those seem like good starting points. Perfect. These two, they're all about experiences, but like up to NW. The big picture, for example, have you ever been to Italy? Or I've never tried escargot. It's not a travel diary. It's about those things being part of your story so far. And it's not about when you did or didn't do those things. It's just, like you said, about the experience being part of your life up until this point. Exactly. It's like asking, have you ever been to Italy? It just invites someone to tell you about it. You know, way more interesting than just, did you go to Italy? Right. It's not a yes or no. It's tell me about your journey. This is great. Uh, okay. So ever and never are our big picture life experience words. What about for and since? Those two always seem to like go together. They do. They do. It's a package deal. Okay. So picture this. Since is like you're sticking a pin on a timeline. That moment in the past, that's where the action starts. Then for swoops in, draws a line from that pin all the way to now. Shows us how long it's been going on. So if I said, I've loved learning languages since I was a child, since I was a child is the pen, and for years and years would be that line. Still going strong. Nailed it. And both of them, for and since, they're always hanging out with the present perfect. Like, they're telling us that past starting point still matters. Okay, this is making those for and since situations so much clearer. Yeah. Now, you mentioned earlier something about the IELTS. Like, knowing the present perfect is important for that test. Oh, absolutely. Big time. Especially the speaking section, you know? Like, imagine you're in the middle of it, and the examiner goes, have you had any interesting experiences while learning English? A <laughs> classic question. Well, yeah, they love that one. Yeah. So how could you use, like, really use the present perfect to answer that well? Okay, so instead of just, yes, I have, which is kind of, <laughs> nah, you hit him with, I've actually had some pretty funny experiences, you know, when I was trying to use English out in the real world. Like, one time I tried to order a beach at a restaurant. I meant peach. Oh, no. <laughs> but also, that's hilarious and such a good example because you're not just saying this happened. You're using the present perfect to make it a story, make people feel that language learning journey. What if the question's less specific? Like, tell me about a skill you've learned that you're proud of. 
Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, so that's your chance to show off how the present perfect connects past effort to like you being awesome now. You could be like, well, I've been learning to play guitar for a few years and I'm finally at this point where I can play some of my favorite songs. Bam, it's been challenging, but I'm really proud of how far I've come. Man, these examples are so good. You're showing that the present perfect, it's not just for grammar nerds, it makes you a better storyteller. Even in a test, you're adding that extra something to your language. Exactly, it's yeah. like proof. Proof that you get how the past made you who you are. Now, speaking of experiences, let's talk Ben and Gone. Those two trip people up all the time. Oh, tell me about it. Ben and Gone. It's like they're playing tricks on us. But I have faith. We'll crack the code. What's the secret? How do we keep them straight? Okay, so here's the deal. Gone means someone's still away, like out there living their best life somewhere else. But Ben means yeah they had that experience but they're back now like she's gone to spain i mean she's probably on a beach right now sipping sangria but if you say she's been to spain it means at some point she was there but now home sweet home so it's all about where they are right now in relation to that past trip they're either still gone or they've been and come back you got it it's a small thing but it changes the whole meaning you know so been and gone it's all about the now really huh whether they're back from that adventure or still out there somewhere. Right. It's those tiny details that can make a big difference when you're trying to get your point across. Speaking of which, we've covered a lot of ground today. Trigger words, tricky word pairs, even how the present perfect can give you an edge on exams like the IELTS. Anything else we got to hit before we wrap up our present perfect journey? Hmm. Good question. We've mostly been talking about, like, speaking with the present perfect, right? But doesn't it pop up in writing, too? Oh, for sure. And it's super useful in writing, especially if you need to give some background info or set the scene, you know, like in an essay, for example. Right. You could use it to create that bridge between the past and the present, even if something you're writing. Got any good examples up your sleeve? OK, picture this. You're writing an essay about, say, how communication has changed over time. You could start with a sentence like the Internet has dramatically changed the way we communicate Boom! You're setting the stage using the present perfect. Right. You're showing that something from the past is still shaping our world today. Yeah, it's like you're saying, this happened, and because of that, this is how things are now. Makes sense. Exactly. And then from that point on, you can dive deeper into specific examples, talk about all the nitty-gritty details. But that initial present perfect statement, that's your foundation. This has been awesome. We really went deep into the world of the present perfect today. We went from thinking of it as just another grammar rule hmm. to like realizing it's a way to make our communication richer, more nuanced. I'm kind of blown away, honestly. Me too. It's amazing how much one little verb tense can impact how we express ourselves, how we tell our stories. Who knew grammar could be so powerful, right? Right. So to everyone listening, remember, the present perfect, it's more than just a grammar rule. It's your secret weapon. It connects those experiences you had with who you are today. Don't be afraid to use it. Play with it. Make it your own. And next time you're listening to someone talk or you're reading a book or whatever, pay attention to how they use the present perfect. Uh -oh. I bet you'll be surprised how often it pops up and how much it adds to the conversation. Love it. Well, folks, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you all today, exploring the amazing world of grammar. Until next time, keep on learning.